Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about power management in your boat. There are expensive ways to do that. There's some fantastic products out there. The Power Pole Charge is premier, but it's expensive. I wanna to talk to you about how I do power management in my boat, a way that I can afford it. Uh, I, I set it up this way uh, every year. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot, and it helps me utilize my alternator on my motor to keep an accessory battery charged and separate it from my starting battery. Uh, and, and make sure power management when I'm running pumps and stuff isn't an issue. Stay tuned and we'll get to how I set it up and how I think it's beneficial for me uh, operating in a, in a tournament setting when I'm consuming all kinds of power and running around all day long. Okay, so I mentioned before that the power pole charge system is a battery and power maintenance system that's got some pretty unique features and it's, it's expensive. It's, it is premier. It, it, if you have the money, that's the way to go. It, it, it offers uh, power management benefits uh, and, and knowledge of where everything is at and what your system is doing in, in terms of balancing power. Uh, check out power pole charge if you've got the money to spend on that, that sort of a thing. If you don't have that kind of money to spend, what can you do? Um, if you're in a boat like mine, I've got a Fishhawk, uh, Crestliner Fishhawk 1750. It's a, just about an 18 foot boat, multi-species, and I use it for uh, team tournament competitions. And I have had power issues when I run trolling motor batteries, specifically for my trolling motor, and then uh, a battery in the back that powered everything not only started the boat, but powered uh, the rest of the boat, powered the panel that runs the accessories on my boat. Uh, I had issues with that because I'm running uh, running pumps, you know, for a live well, if you get fish early in the day, you're running that live well pump on recirculation probably all day long. You're running graphs all day long at the console in the front. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've got any, uh, any newer uh, uh, live, uh, sonar technology you're, you're you've really got you know maybe even a separate battery for that but uh adding a battery to your system to power your accessories is a real smart way to go about it uh, you can add an accessory battery put it back near your starting battery and then add a component to it that is effective at managing power and that's uh, blue c systems mini add a battery and they've got a couple of amperage ranges depending on the motor type you have I've got a 115 Mercury Pro XS, and that's got uh, uh, less than a 65 amp output uh, alternator. So, uh, um, and then they've got another one for a higher amperage, up to I think it's 120 amp alternator. So, Mini Ada battery systems from Blue Seas Systems uh, have a couple of different size systems you can go with. But what's included in it? It includes uh, a battery combining switch and a, a, uh, uh, a charge detection uh, a component to it called an ACR, Automatic Charge Relay System. And that charge relay system, what it does is uh, takes a, it senses the voltage of your battery systems when there's a charge on it, on your starting battery from your motor. It senses that charge and then opens a circuit and puts charge on both batteries. So now your starting battery and your accessory battery are both charging off of your alternator and that's a that's a big deal uh, if you're doing a lot of running around uh, in a tournament day for instance uh, you've got a lot of charge time you can keep your accessory battery charged up and then as the boat shut off and power is being consumed once the power gets down to a certain voltage it disconnects that so that the starting battery is separate then from the accessory battery and then the accessory battery can can uh, uh, start drawing down on charge as you use it and then once again, you fire up your boat, uh, take off to the next spot. Uh, that charge relay senses the um, voltage. It senses the charge voltage level, uh, you know, get up in the 13 range and then bam, opens a switch, charges, begins charging both batteries again and, and pulls up a charge on that accessory battery. So you could go easily through an eight hour tournament day and run pumps, run electronics, um, you know, your side imagers, your down imagers, your 2D sonar, that sort of thing works very well, hooked up to it, along with all the other accessory boat uh, power needs during the day, uh, keeps it charged and, and, and uh, lets it operate. Um, 
So it's a fantastic unit. I use it every year and we'll show you a little bit about the setup. Okay, I'm gonna, you're looking, you're looking into my uh, rear storage compartment, my battery power storage compartment. When I first got the boat, what came in it was this battery here. There's a lot of stuff in here, but I'll walk through what it is. I had a battery here that was connected to my outboard motor and all my accessory power was connected to this one battery. And uh, um, just to get the layout of what's going on in here, we'll walk through it. I have a starting battery here. I have an accessory battery over here. I have my two power pole pumps right here. And then I have two nylon boards that I mounted to the rear of the compartment that contain the components I talked about with the Blue Sea system. One I mounted to the back here that's got the battery combiner on it. And that battery combiner allows you in emergency situations to shut power off, turn power on, and then combine your battery voltage in case you get in a low power situation somehow uh, should the uh, ACR system fail or you need uh, emergency power to start your boat. So there's a switch there. And then the same thing on a nylon bracket on the back wall. I mounted the actual ACR here. I mounted a negative bus terminal here. And then two... Uh, two uh, 65 amp inline fuses here either side of it that actually protect protect the the ACR and uh, so I've kind of cleanly and neatly it might look like a lot in here but it's pretty well uh, neatly put in here everything's uh, protected um, and I'll show you a diagram here separately to show you how uh, each panel lays out and then maybe what the separate components are and how they look before I installed them and, and took a self-tapping uh, fasteners and fastened that nylon plate to the back wall and to the side wall, which gave me plenty of room. Then I took out the single battery tray that went for the uh, standard starting battery that it came with. I put in a double tray to add my uh, second battery to the system um, to help me with all my accessories. I'm going to show you with diagrams and, and maybe try to do a little uh, animation with description on, on which wires go to what. Since, since I thought about making this video after I had installed this thing, and there's a couple of videos out there uh, on installation that I thought were helpful. I'll drop them in the, in the description below. But I'm going to walk through a little bit of a, a, a diagram, rather, that, to show what's connected to what in relationship to uh, uh, how I set this up. Or how it's set up and, and, and I'll give you a link to a description for another video that, that I got some direction with on how to install this. It's not too difficult. I'm also including in the description below the, the size wire and type wire I used, the connections I used, a um, uh, uh, clamp, a big you know crimper, uh, industrial strength crimper to get these heavy gauge wire connections crimped and also shrink wrap to appropriately waterproof them. So I'll put a few items that I got together uh, to be able to do this job myself and I'll put those in, in the link to the descri description below. Uh, and uh, like and subscribe and let me know if this is helping you folks uh, with your setup for uh, getting some charge to your auxiliary battery and having some peace of mind out there that at the end of a long day of power use you can uh, turn the switch and get your battery.